Hello, everyone, and welcome to another in a series of um, webinars on Higby from Exadel. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a um, product called Higby for Musicians, which is basically a, a working of Higby so that it um, is optimized to help meet the needs of musicians. Uh, my name is Charlie Collins. I'll be helping out with the uh, logistics of this webinar. And so I'll start out with a few um, housekeeping um, tips. First of all, uh, we basically use one in your lower right-hand corner of your screen. You should see a question panel. That's actually for questions that occur to you throughout the webinar and also for any um, comments you might have about anything. You just put them in that same panel. Um, the basic, and then after this webinar is done, there will actually be a recording available. So um, you'll be able to access it afterwards. And there will be an automatic reminder email that goes out that tells you exactly where to go to. So the basic structure of this will be uh, Alexa Weber Morales, who's a, a performing artist, a Grammy-nominating performing artist, and someone who's very enthusiastic about this tool as a way to, to help grow what she does uh, even better. And also we'll be having, she'll be doing a demo that will Basically, that'll be the bulk of this webinar is her going into Pigby and showing you exactly how you can use it to, um, to do whatever you need. Oh, sorry about that. Do whatever is necessary to promote your uh, musical activities. And then we also have David Schoenbach here, who's the VP of Product Marketing. For, uh, he's heavily involved in guiding Pigby. So both of them will be available for a Q&A session that will occur after the demo. And um, so I'm just going to hand it over to Alexa, and she'll start you going. Thank you, Charlie. And good morning, Cyberspace. I'm here with David Schoenbach, and I'm going to show you how to uh, build an app. It's, it's, um, it's going to be a pretty easy process, as you'll see. Um, and I suppose it's not news to all of you that uh, a mobile strategy is really important. Um, it was a little bit news to me a couple months ago when, when I was approached by Exadel. Um, but I've come to realize that uh, people are going to, uh, you know, need to consume our services and our information and, and our offerings from mobile devices, not from their PCs. And so the question is, how can you get in, you know, to these waters quickly, and um, I think Exadel has come up with a pretty cool uh, tool for doing that. And the idea was to take their existing visual editor, which has been around for about a year, and add this wizard on top of it that was specified just for musicians. And so I got to work with them on what a working gigging musician would really like to see, what kind of services um, could be consumed from the cloud. And so right now, I'll just take you through building an app with my information. So we're going to uh, go here. We've already, I've already logged in to Tigzee. And uh, I actually have a couple projects already started. But right now, I'm going to start a brand new project. And we launch the wizard. And I choose Band App for Musicians. As you can see, there's other verticals that have been defined and will be filled out. For now, we'll do the Band App for Musicians. I'm going to choose mobile app, and this will build a native application. Once again, I have a choice between a smartphone or a tablet. I'm going to choose smartphone. And I'm going to give my project a name. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give it a different name because I don't want this to get rejected at the end here. So. And I'm going to choose an icon file that I've saved. This is a very small uh, PNG. I think it's 57 by 57. That will be the icon. And then I'm going to choose some pages. And just to make this really snappy, I'm going to just do four pages to include in this app. And later I'll show you a full featured one. But we're just going to do the splash page, um, bio, photos, my gig calendar and my music page. And uh, I'm going to choose a splash page image. 
and upload that. And while that's uploading, I can actually move ahead. And I'm going to choose another image for my bio page. And then I'm going to upload some information into my bio. And here's just a short little blurb I have. And that page is ready. Moving on. Um, going to upload my Flickr page. And as you can see, we're blasting through this. Now I'm going to get my iCal feed from a service that I use that propagates all my shows out to various newspapers and other calendars. Then I'm going to choose SoundCloud. And as you can see, it's making it very easy for me because I've filled this out before. So that's my SoundCloud account. SoundCloud works very well. It's got a lot of APIs for mobile uh, platforms. And now here we are at the last choice. I can choose a color scheme. Um, and all of this is further customizable in the advanced um, visual editor. But for now, I'm going to choose yellow. And I'm going to give my project a few tags. Obviously, I would give myself more tags if I had more time. Um, and we are to the last page here. And you know, the, the, the really exciting thing that I can't do for you right now because we're not on video is that I can hold up my, my phone to the, to the screen and take a picture of that QR code and look at it on my Android or iPhone or tablet um, and see it uh, right away loading up. Um, that's a pretty nice step to have, and it's actually um, not always so easy to come by, but Tigsy does it for you, um, and you can share that URL with other people. Meanwhile, we can also go in the browser, and here's the splash screen. Here's the splash screen image loaded up, and that's going to load for eight seconds, and then it's going to move on. And we just made a, a small app with four buttons, as you can see. So there's just a short bio there. Um, in a fuller version of the app, you'll see a longer bio. Here's my photo stream, and uh, scroll through that. So I just made a, a dummy account with just a few photos in it. And here's my gigs. This is the most exciting. I love this. Um, you can scroll through um, this constantly updating um, list of my current gigs, and obviously. Because this is a service that's in the cloud, every time I change my gig feed, that will be propagated out to my mobile app and all my fans. And finally, um, we have the SoundCloud. Um, and these are all my files from my SoundCloud account. And if I click on these, it's going to open up a new browser window. But playing my music. Oh, it's so relaxing. I'm not sure you can hear that, so I'm going to go back. But you certainly are welcome to go back and listen to that. Um, and that's it. So we've just built a, built a quick um, application with four buttons. Um, and I think what I'd like to do is show you, uh, I'm going to close it. Well, no, I'll leave this open. And let me go back and show you the, the fuller application that I built. Hopefully you guys are all ooing and aahing right now. A little bit hard to do this without seeing your faces and the looks of wonderment. Anyways, you can see right now I've got an unlimited account, so I can create as many applications as I want. But I'm going to open up this fuller featured one now. I could actually go back into the wizard here and change this. Um, I could delete a page, um, and as we go through the wizard, you can see that I had already uploaded a lot of the information that we just uploaded. However, there are more pages now. So I've got a YouTube page, I've got um, a Twitter page, uh, my iCal, my SoundCloud, 
my RSS feed off of my website, and a bunch of stores selling my music. And again, at this stage, I could change the uh, color scheme and regenerate it. And now, and, and a bunch of tags that I put in. So this is a project that I created earlier that's more full featured, but I've just made a small change to it. Once again, I could grab that QR code, take a picture of it, and see it right on my device. Or I can click test. There's the splash screen. If I click on that, it'll actually speed ahead to the next piece of it. But now we see um, a different bio. I put in a, a fuller bio with all sorts of flowery language. And um, now I have a news page, which is an RSS feed off of my website. all the news off my website. I've got a video page now. And here is um, here are the videos that I captured uh, at the uh, National Association of, of Music Merchants conference in LA last week, which I attended with, with uh, David. And there we have Stevie Wonder. I don't know if you can hear that. Anyway, you might want to go back and listen to that. Stevie Wonder playing, testing out a beautiful grand piano. I was just amazed. Um, here I have my Twitter feed, and you can read my thoughts here. And again, this is uh, updated in real time. Once again, have the music page that we showed before. the gig feed, and finally, uh, a store page. And all of these um, store accounts will open up into a new browser window on the uh, device and take you to uh, anywhere that I sell uh, my music. So that's um, a demo of a quick way to use the wizard, and um, I don't know, I think I'm going to pass the baton over to David Schoenbach to describe some of the ways you can get deeper into this, uh, this editor. Thanks, Alexa. Uh, this is David Schoenbach. I'm the VP of Product Management here at Exadel. I've been really excited to get involved in this whole project over the past few months since I joined Exadel. And uh, to give some overview and then also to jump into some specifics about the musician uh, tools. Uh, Exadel had uh, created a wonderful tool for developers called Tigzy. Actually, it was previously called Tigger, and we just renamed it. So Tigzy at Tigzy.com. And we, with that tool, there was also the possibility of customizing to address the specific needs and provide solutions for specific markets. And the Musicians Wizard, Tigzy for Musicians, which is available at musicians.tigzy.com, was intended to be the first of a number of different vertical market tools uh, to address needs of non-professional developers who wish to develop apps very easily. Uh, so we've got uh, essentially two layers of tools available. Uh, the, the deeper tool that, uh, that has a longer history here is uh, the, almost a year old now, is uh, Tigzy, which is, has a visual editor for a complete, uh, complete and total editing of HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript that, that builds the app. We're using HTML5 uh, and we're using jQuery Mobile as a framework for UI components. We're also using PhoneGap as the uh, build tool for access to device features. Uh, those together make this, as far as we know, the 
the fullest featured and most powerful cloud-based tool for HTML5 development and for mobile app development. Uh, within that, there's also uh, a the uh, the second layer of uh, a wizard-based tool that Alexa has just walked you through, so you've been able to see all the uh, all the the ease with which someone can simply provide information uh, and have an app built right away. Uh, we've also seen the the test version uh, of that. Uh, so uh, the next thing I'd like to do is, I think Alexa already walked through not only the building, but the fact that you can relaunch the wizard and you can customize uh, by changing values from within the wizard. Another level that we can go to is to open the visual editor, the TXZ editor. And with, within that editor, then we can uh, change other values uh, and fully customize. So for example, where you saw a preset number of different colored themes, we have total access to, uh, to a broader uh, control of the look of the app. We also have uh, access to the services that underlie the app. Key to the TIGV model is that we are a consumer of APIs. The web is moving very rapidly toward an API architecture. Uh, we think of it as a client cloud architecture where various services are made available uh, as APIs and those services can be consumed by developers to build apps. And we've provided what we believe is the easiest approach to, uh, to building those services uh, into an app. So, for example, uh, here you're looking at the uh, at Alexa's app, and you can see that uh, a menu has been assembled from the choices she made, and a grid here has been added to it. You could add other uh, UI components here. You can also add services from a services menu. Uh, we can look within the existing project, and you'll see that a number of different services have already been uh, pre-built. And you'll see just the ease with which uh, a service is integrated into, uh, into TIGSY. Here, a, uh, so for example, where Alexa provided access to her Twitter feed, it's being done by a REST service. Here it's called Twitter REST. And the URL is provided here. The method and data type are provided. And then with that, you can look at uh, the actual query. And, and the, the query uh, is actually uh, being generated separately from what we see here. But if we wanted to generate new queries, so for example, I can provide TIGSY as a query here. And we can immediately test that connection. So we'll see uh, that the query to Twitter is TIGSY. We test it. And we get an immediate response with all the uh, data related to uh, all the Twitter feed uh, related to the term. Uh, one other thing I want to show you is that we do have access, while you're viewing this, uh, to uh, this is provided as a public preview. So with this URL, you can view the same preview that, uh, that uh, you saw Alexa stepping through. So I'm going to make this available to you uh, in our chat right here. So you should be able to use that URL, and in your own browser, you should be able to see uh, the, the same preview that Alexa just demonstrated. So 
So that's the background I wanted to provide. I'm happy to take questions, and I believe we have a few. All right. So, sure. Okay. Um, one of the first questions that is um, a basic question about after after you've created the app, let's say you want to um, generate the, you want to get access to the source code. You have access to that as part of the export option, right? Sure. Uh, the complete uh, source code is, is available. In fact, we can see uh, here the various options for uh, for export. Uh, I have to close the rest of it for first. Uh, and then I'll see the various export options. And here uh, we can export it either as a Sigli plugin, which makes it consumable by another project within Sigli, and also the, the complete HTML, CSS, and JavaScript can be exported. But uh, and you can can you export from inside the Sigli the musician front end? No, this, this is yes. in a visual editor. Yeah, we're looking within the visual editor, and I'll actually back out of here, and uh, we'll see that it that it is. And there we can export it either as an Android APK file, which is immediately consumable. You can email it to your friends, or an iOS Xcode uh, uh, file, which is then uh, which you can send on to the Apple iPhone App Store and submit it there. Okay. In addition to uh, those two options, you can ask the Sixty team to assist in publishing and for a small fee, we will submit it to the App Store and the Android market on your behalf. And, what, and you also have the HTML5 option, right? Correct. There, there are essentially two different ways. We can do a, a hybrid app, which is a, a uh, an iOS or uh, or Android app, or we can be building a, an HTML5 uh, mobile web app, which of course can be placed uh, on on your URL, or we can provide uh, web hosting for you. And often, there's the user. There's no, they don't really care what the underlying mechanism is as long as it delivers what they want. It's really up to whoever is providing it what works for them. Right, and you could do on on for instance on the iPhone, you could you could have the HTML5 app, and then you could have a bookmark mm -hmm. on oh, right. your desktop, yeah. and you just sidestep the whole store question. Yeah. All right. Um, here's a question. Uh, maybe I'll just read it out literally. Um, is there, it asked about integration with Foursquare. Yeah, I thought that was a great question. Yeah. Uh, for an, the example given is uh, Shadam runs through the Foursquare API to let fans check into the show. Uh, do we have anything in the, do we have anything like that now, or do we have anything in the horizon for that kind of integration where you sure well, Foursquare-like capability? There's essentially two levels. One is uh, those that we have currently integrated and made visible within the CC tool, and Foursquare is not yet among those. But uh, it should be an easy job for anyone to consume a, uh, a REST API. So, so Foursquare's API should be accessible within the visual editor. Oh, and here's kind of a technical question, but it's still pretty relevant. Is that in terms of the web services that you can connect up with, is it only REST services, or are there other types? Like SOAP that you can connect with through Sixty. We have total access to the JavaScript, uh, and so any customization can be done there. So yes, broader support is available. We've optimized this for easy access to that. Okay. Um, what about history, which I guess is versioning? Like if you're doing different changes, do we have any versioning support, or is that something that's in the horizon? Uh, I'm like gonna, I'm like gonna, you could go back to a different version. Correct. Uh, I'm going to have to check with our support team. I don't know all the details of our approaches to versioning. Okay. I, I think that's it. Okay. Um, all right. Um, can, can users make uh, purchases in the – oh, do you have a – can users make purchases inside the app, or are there only links to off apps to like iTunes on the iPhone? Currently, it's just linking off, but 
that seems like it's a big issue in the work is how to, and it seems like a lot of people are struggling with that, right? Correct. What we've done is we've partnered with a group called WAC, the Wholesale Application Community. They have an in-app billing service, and they're partnered with uh, about 60 carriers around the world. And we have integrated their, their APIs, so those in-app billing services are available. We haven't yet rolled that into the musician's wizard, but that, that sort of solution is one that we expect to uh, provide in the future. Okay, here's a question that rolls back that revisiting the web app versus the hybrid app that you that's like in the store thing is are there any limitations from using it as a web app? Like for instance the uh, uh, access to the iCloud security layout is are are those there there are no known real issues in those particular areas, are there? Or, um, in general, you should think of this as a tool for building hybrid apps because we are using HTML, HTML5, uh, jQuery mobile, PhoneGap, uh, and, and with PhoneGap, we're uh, essentially wrapping it uh, to create a native product for iOS or for Android. So in those, in those ways, it's not truly native, like, uh, you know, coding to, to the metal, as it were. So, so it's a, a hybrid in that way, but a lot of the functionality that, that you're looking uh, for is being exposed by phone gap. And you know, David, I mean, one of the interesting things about being at NAMM and meeting all those musicians and music store owners and, and music education people is a lot of people are, you know, we're talking about spending six months to learn Objective-C or learn Xcode and, you know, not having a really satisfying software development process it seems to me like this is a great way to, to, to be productive almost immediately, you know, and see what is the usage of this app, you know, and really perfect your strategy around it and, and rather than becoming an expert in maybe close to the metal programming. Okay. Um, are there, have any issues with scalability come up with bigger musician apps, big deeper musician apps or CD apps in general? I'm not sure what scalability you could Are there from that. having a lot of users? Uh, or do you? These services are, are uh, we're consuming services like Twitter, which has had its own scalability mm -hmm. issue. Uh, but, uh, but in general, it's, it's dependent on whatever the external services are. Uh, we are looking to provide some Exadel hosted services in the future. Uh, so, uh, but Exadel has a long history of professional development and services where we're providing services to banks such as Bank of America and UBS, Royal Bank of Scotland, et cetera. So they depend on our reliable services. Uh, I would expect that we'll scale, we'll scale very nicely in terms of the services we host. All right. Uh, oh, here's someone asking a housekeeping question uh, about the, I, at the beginning I was telling you about the uh, getting access to a recording of the webinar, that will be available pretty soon after the meeting and it will be, anyone who registers for this webinar will receive a notice of that, including the link. You know, and, an, and another thing about the scalability and like the, one thing I think is interesting is that, you know, these it, these mobile apps are, are really pretty small files ultimately, you know, and like you said, the scalability question isn't, isn't on the app really, it's on the services. So, um, that's, I, I think, another exciting aspect of, of this new sort of wave of, of development, client cloud, you know, API-dependent development. Okay, and here, here's an interesting question about the store. I mean, if you, let's say you, you, you export the app and you put it in the Android or it's into the iPhone store, is it registered under, who, who is it registered under? Uh, is you, is your company, or Exabel? Or what's the... We, uh, we will file for you a uh, registration in your name. So uh, these will not be listed under Exadel or Sigby, but rather under the individual. And here's a question, um, too, about the, I think we kind of touched on it before, but um, let's say you, you get to a, you build the app with the, with the uh, with Sigby for musicians, you've gone through all the steps, but then you decide that you want to change something. Is it pretty easy to do that, or even without any explicit versioning control? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can you can go back into the wizard and change anything 
Um, I mean, once you are getting into versioning, once it's in the store, then you would need to, you know, issue a new version to the to the uh, to the store, and then that would issue an update alert to anybody who owns that app. Um, but David's showing he's he's adding some information here and regenerating. Uh, you know, we can regenerate the app as I did earlier. That's that's super easy to do, um, and super easy to test it and have many people go hit that app and, and try it out. All right. Um. And that's unusual. I will say, having you know, looking in the market, it seems like that's an unusual um, aspect compared to um, a lot of the products out there that are that are wizard based. In any case, um, a lot of times the flexibility to go back and change it is simply not there. All right. Well, I think we've kind of uh, done this enough for now. I mean, uh, what I'd like to also explain to everyone is, we uh, if, if a question occurs to you later, we you can always um, send it in to Alexa or or uh, or uh, um, David, here's their email addresses. We're we're all we we try and when we do development of our projects, we're always we're always striving to be uh, very responsive to what people actually want. I mean that's the best way to have a successful kind of product offering. So we really value your feedback. We're really very interested in any questions you might have um, about this, and please. Be in touch. We have a whole community set up. When you go to musicians.tiki.com, you'll see links to our blog and all the and, and a whole setup. And one of the things that I didn't put in here that I think is really good about Tiki in general is we have a we use Get Satisfaction as a support form. So you can see what other people are saying about Tiki in general, and and also there there should be questions about Tiki for musicians there. Uh, I have one last question actually that came up, which was a. Uh, there, someone was asking about, uh, there was a screen where you're showing your different uh, services where you can add access to things like SoundCloud, but the only thing listed there is SoundCloud. Are there plans to add more services like SoundCloud? Yeah, definitely. SoundCloud, though, is definitely, uh, we, we, we started actually with Bandcamp, but SoundCloud had more a, a much uh, broader API community and ecosystem, so it worked better with mobile, but there will be others. Okay, great. I think we've covered just about everything. We, we didn't want to make this too long. The whole, part of the whole point of Tignity for Musicians is that it's fast. So yes. Let's keep the <laughs> webinar fast. Uh, I'm just going to leave the, I'm going to shut things down, but I'm going to leave the screen up for a while, and um, then I'll start shutting down the webinar. Thanks to everybody for coming. We really value people, for the, the fact that people are willing to give up some of their time in their busy days to come and listen to us, and we'll, we'll, we'll have more webinars. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.